Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Got my brother, Subtle Infinity. We got so much information for y'all today. We just want to open it up with an introduction. There's been a lot of talk in the Flat Earth community. A lot of you wanted to um, hear from the brother, Subtle Infinity, on a lot of these recent talks. So I'm going to just shut my mouth and let my brother take over. Um, thanks again for having me back, Brother Sanchez. Um, yeah, this story is forever expanding. And uh, I've been coming from the perspective of, from the inside out perspective about the humans, the human story. What, how does the human story relate to the flat earth story? And from my perspective, it, there's no, it, it's very easy to see how this system has been designed to keep us on a particular vibration. We've been held, where I come from interpreting What's going on is in reference to vibration, and we'll talk about this in reference to the blood and, and all this other stuff, and water and elements themselves, but this correlates directly to the level of consciousness of not only the individual, but the collective consciousness as a whole. And when I first heard about the flat earth, storyline, the flat earth uh, understanding, I really wanted to see how this affected not only the, the individual, but the collective consciousness as a whole. The, the individual consciousness and the, the entire, the vibration of forward and lack thereof progress of the entire human civilization. So I kept that that mentality from the beginning and I never really separated the colonial program from the heliocentric deception because it's directly tied into the university system it's directly tied into political scene capitalism uh, the supremacy program the, the racial division the indigenous and aboriginal genocides um, the public education system, the every every single program that's designed to maintain, even down to your cell phone, even the, the technology that we have today, people, it's an it's an understanding that the technology that is being released on the commercial circuit is not the maxed out technology that there is. There is more technology that's out there. The only reason why it's not being released is because so-called powers that be particular technology like consciousness information and history is held back in order to maintain a particular vibration of consciousness in the people a dumbed down perspective and at the same time make a profit off of the time that's being stolen slash given away by the people who don't challenge the system overall so when I was coming up into the flat earth perspective, it was just like, whoa, this is an obvious thing. This makes a lot of sense. It's obvious that NASA makes billions and billions of dollars. They're directly tied into technology. They're directly tied into the university system. And it just all activates the, the collective mind control program. It's like the, the cornerstone of mind control as a whole. Like we hear about mind control with the Illuminati, MK Ultra, and all this other stuff, but we don't really go into it. Sometimes we get distracted by the, the Hollywood scenes of celebrities being subjected to MK Ultra and all this other stuff. We don't see how if you just take that mentality and then expand that to what's going on on a grander scale, we can see how all this stuff is being pieced together. So that's why some of the videos that I've been putting out lately are helping people realize or see a different perspective of just flat earth. A lot of people in the mainstream flat earth so-called community are like wishing, hoping and praying that it goes mainstream. And I'm in every cell in my body is saying, what the fuck are you talking about when you're asking about or hoping that flat earth goes mainstream when you know what that system is based upon. You know what that 
that that control grid in that that system is designed to do. So when you realize that, just like when you realize that technology is being held back, then you realize that uh, it's going to be released for a profit. It's going to be released for uh, some kind of control measure that won't have anything to do with the people as a whole. It will only be sold as a way to maintain control over the masses and expand the mind control as a whole. And that goes down into the very natures of how we see ourselves, how we understand, understand and understand who we are as human beings, who we are as particular cultures, who we are as uh, a masculine representation, a feminine representation. All of these things are being challenged by the system who needs to water everything that needs to water everything down in order to keep people in this limbo space of consciousness where the answers to your reality the truth of your reality the so-called innovation and progress of your reality is given to you by a system that makes its money off of your enslavement Mm -hmm. So when I put these videos out talking about the actual history of the United States corporation, the history of the colonial program, the history of the mainstream media, media, the history of the university system, the history of the heliocentric model, and tied directly into the programs that are relating to people being killed on the streets today and people being completely out of balance in every way, there's, I don't see any separation there. Mm -hmm. There's a direct correlation to keeping people in limbo, keeping people separated, and keeping people separated from their culture. That's where your true power lies. It doesn't lie in the reactionary program of, or, or yeah, the reactionary program, the Hegelian dialectic program of reacting to when the so-called powers that be make their move. The actual power moves come when you, from the inside out, manifest whatever kind of information and understanding, understanding and overstanding that comes naturally to you by tapping into your ancestors, your true history, and your actual understanding of what's really going on here outside of what we are being told is going on here. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much the introduction that I, I'm coming from in reference to what we're getting ready, the topics that we're getting ready to talk about and how it di directly relates to the flat earth um, storyline and pretty much the human storyline. Now, let me ask you this. When we talk about um, flat earth going mainstream, that's something that I hear a lot. We, If you ask me, I think it's kind of already done that to a certain extent when you see all the celebrities coming out the closet. Shaq came out then, he retracted his word. Everybody want to put their hand on it. I will say that it's a very popular topic and it does give people a lot of attention who otherwise nobody would have been searching from. Like nobody cares about Shaq, but the latest thing that made him get some publicity was the flat earth and we see how people is some people is using it just for marketing publicity i see this happening a lot, a lot in the black countries community where we got people doing half-ass research and they making videos where they so-called debunk the flat earth and at the end of the video they want you to go and buy their supplements or go to their online university minister inky did a video on flat earth and he embarrassed himself if you ask me he said that in the end, his conclusion was that the earth is neither flat nor round. It don't have a shape, but he continued on to say that it's shaped like structured water. I suggest y'all look at this video. It's, it's yo, bro, it's, it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> but the reason I'm building on all of this is because, you know, with so much going on with the flat earth thing and everybody want to put their hands in it for their different reasons. Even in the flat earth community, we got a bunch of beefs and clicks and people saying this person is an agent, that person is not an agent. You know, we got our main big names and things of that nature. I want you to deal with the big names in the flat earth community as well as deal a little bit more of this mainstream thing. Well, giving everybody the benefit of the doubt, starting off there and then I'll work my way back. 
everybody's going to approach whatever it is that they're talking about or thinking they're talking about at their level of consciousness and what they're comfortable with. People who are talking about flat earth aren't going to talk about flat earth until they're comfortable with it. Just like people won't talk about the Illuminati or, or politics or whatever it is, people stay in their comfort zones. So this is why I said in one of my previous videos, whatever people are putting out in these videos is going to be a representation of their own inner work and lack thereof. So like I said in the video, anybody can make an Illuminati video. Anybody can make a regular flat earth video, reptilian video. You can talk about all of this information, but really what's really being said is how you're talking about it. Are you talking about it from a space of empowerment, knowingness, truth? Or are you talking about it from a space of just, you know, this is some information, this is just some stuff, you know? I mean, and, and like I said, I said it like that, but not to come down on anybody, but just to say that there's a difference in energies in how you approach this and that stuff is needed. A lot of the information or people who put out videos like that help me get into a certain mentality and a certain um, researching mode. It's just they're like stepping stones. And if you stay on one stepping stone, don't see people this is what happens in the YouTube community and a lot of these uh, even outside of the flat so-called flat earth community people get like on YouTube fame for like one or two videos and they they really don't know what else to do or have nothing else to share so they mm -hmm. get caught in this one stepping stone in reference to like conspiracy theory stories or whatever it is and they don't have anywhere else to go and since they have such a huge following now that's based upon a particular level of consciousness they don't want to lose that following this is not for everybody but this is for some people mm -hmm. so they don't want to step out and lose subscribers they don't want to step out and like feel a certain way they don't want to start you know, get into that space because that's uncomfortable. And where that originates, that comes from people not wanting to change themselves on the inside. The mm -hmm. hardest thing that you can actually do is change yourself. Mm -hmm. So when people get comfortable on something like a YouTube channel or a stream of consciousness on YouTube, then that can be a barrier. It can actually stop you from expanding the storyline because you have now gotten off of the freeway of consciousness and then gotten to a comfortable rest stop and you can fall back asleep. Yeah. A lot of people get to those rest stops, get comfortable and fall back asleep. And when you fall asleep, you go into another dream and start to defend the dream. Now you start to defend that because now you have so many different people coming at you in so many different ways trying to keep you in that bubble, other people trying to keep you out of that bubble. You keep people close to you on this way, you keep people far away on that way, and, and that bubble just keeps going on and on and on and on. What happens is this entire storyline, including Flat Earth, is just a trigger. It's just a trigger to the expansion of consciousness. Every day you wake up, you have the ability to learn something new. Every day you wake up, you have the ability to help somebody learn something new. Whatever it is, you have the ability to expand your inner space. space. This is why a lot of the mainstream media focuses on like the gym rat program, like just trying to focus only on your body, focus only on... Um, like building up your muscles and so on and so forth. So that's another way of keeping people on a particular level of consciousness on the body consciousness. Now we already know the mind control consciousness and we already know the soul con the soul control consciousness with mainstream religions and everything else, the new age agenda and so on and so forth. So every layer of our rea reality is being manipulated and it's only the responsibility of each individual to go in into, into themselves through each layer, through the body consciousness, the mind consciousness and the soul consciousness to figure out how all this stuff works and what's really going on here. When you have a new mainstream media like YouTube that's so attractive to people and then you can have hundreds of thousands and millions of people following you now, 
you don't want to disappoint people. And that's that's no different than Hollywood actors and athletes not talking about anything, not educating themselves, not doing anything that will expand outside of known for. Tom Hanks is known for this. This actor's known for that. Mm-hmm. That actor's known for this. This athlete's known for that. Yep. This YouTube channel's known for this. That YouTube channel's known for that. And the thing is, you're just creating another another linear process in a reality that is largely the majority of the percentage of your reality outside of the physical reality is non-linear you are forever expanding in every angle in every direction so when you when you limit yourself to a single stream of thought a single stream of consciousness like people latch on to the flat earth or people latch on to the illuminati or latch on to globalists and all that other stuff and don't realize that all of this stuff is connected to largely one story your the in the inner story and the outer story the collective story and the individual story it's all the same it's all one story but when we get divided by so many linear programs, we lock ourselves into that that space. So in reference to, to Flat Earth specifically, uh, the biggest, brightest gem for a lot of the big Flat Earth channels out there is for Flat Earth to go mainstream because a lot of the people that are, you know, hoping for that shit, they... Uh, Internally, whether it's consciously or not, subconscious, there's an attachment to uh, fame there. It's like some people are going to be like, oh, I'm going to be like so famous now. Like internally, that's happening. Not saying that's consciously happening, Mm -hmm. but subconsciously, that shit exists. And a lot of people, and especially if people are asking for the flat earth or hoping for the flat earth to go mainstream, you're not realizing what the intent is like asking a virus to do something for a parasite to do something for you. The parasite created the problem that separated you from understanding the flat earth in the first place. Let me ask you something because I don't want us to get too far before we clarify what exactly (laughs) uh, going mainstream mean because I think a lot of flat earthers fall under the going mainstream banneker really just want it to be widespread they really just want the truth to be widespread the day that the truth reaches the entire earth and that everyone knows the truth about nature that would be synonymous with the truth going mainstream but i think what you mean is basically going mainstream in a way where it becomes watered down control and it's out of the hands of the people and now it's give re it's marketed repackaged on the shelves given to us where it's still in a control form to do the same agenda of those same evil ones in power i know it totally what you mean and there's a thin line between when we say going mainstream with a few people who just really want the truth to get out there worldwide but yeah i i I totally get where you're coming from that's that see that's checkers See, playing in reaction to the the mainstream adopting something like Flat Earth, that's checkers. If we don't realize the chess game that's being played on the soul, the mind, and the body level, you will forever be trapped in whatever the so-called powers that be program sets up for you to be trapped within. So when... That, that, like I said, there's something, there is an expansion of consciousness, there is something that changes when this goes mainstream in that, in that space. But if you don't stay ahead of, like in chess, you don't stay ahead of those moves, then you'll be trapped within a checker, a checker game program. And this ain't checkers. This is why I talk about the human story. The human story is the chess game. The human story on the soul, the mind, and the body, that's the chess game for maximum ultimate control over the entire consciousness. That's chess that's being played. Flat Earth being held back with behind the heliocentric deception and then being released by the mainstream media, that's checkers. 
And if we continue to consume ourselves within the checker game, we won't know what the hell is going on. We'll be continually caught in this, this limbo space and constantly be acting in reaction to. And this is why it's built up so much by the mainstream media. It's so attractive to people to get caught in that, you know, uh, just talk about this and talk about that. And, and uh, you know, you'll get all these subscribers and all this other stuff. But if you don't do the work that's in that's anchored from the internal space, then you'll be walking up into another trap. And if you have subscribers, in my perspective, you'll be setting other people up walk into that trap because these people look up to you they look up to you and i'm not saying this in a way to like put expectations on anybody i'm saying this because this is you and me and listeners talking right now and we can just talk about this is how i would talk to anybody that i would know like if, mm -hmm. like i said in the last video if anybody were to ask me about going into the military i would tell them hell no because of my experience so i'm sharing my experience in reference to this, this is not to put expectations or judgments on anybody else. Like I said, the people who put that information out there is needed. At the same time, if I see a leader leading thousands of people into a trap and I have the capabilities of saying something both to that leader and those those people that I don't only have the capability, I have a responsibility to say something that is in reference to that and that goes for anybody and everybody so when i see everybody being consumed only by the linear program of flat or globe infinite or dome and never really going into the storyline of the experience or the human storyline the experience the, the natural story then i'm gonna have to say something about that that's where i'm coming from in reference to the mainstream and the information streams as a whole. I wanted to give you the opportunity to just um, speak on the few leaders. <clears throat> if you had anything you would like to say to any of the spearheads of the flat earth community, what they could do, even myself, I just wanted you to touch on those leaders and any message you may have for those higher ups at the top of the community. I don't really have anything specifically that I was saying to them because like i said it's individual each person is going to share whatever they're comfortable with and i don't knock anybody as like a precursor i don't knock anybody for what they do or how they do now having said that at the same time i have my own perspectives on religion a lot of the people who are making videos um about flat earth are still coming from uh, a mainstream religion perspective i have my own perspectives on that uh, some people, they're coming from it from like um, the Illuminati perspective, the so-called powers that be. Uh, other people are coming from, you know, just sharing information as a whole scientific, like all that stuff is needed. Now, given that all that stuff is needed at the same time, if I were to personally talk to them, I guess I would say something like, you know, Continually grow every day. Continue to challenge yourself and expand your horizons. <laughs> For no uh -huh. pun intended. Like expand your expand your perspective and challenge your belief systems because that's the main thing. For people who lock themselves into a particular belief system, you you largely slow yourself down. There is a difference between. And, and an interpretation and constant challenging of information, locking yourself into a belief system and having to defend that. Uh, a lot of the religious, a lot of the religious mainstream religion perspectives get into um, just defending one particular thing from one perspective. I don't see any separation from, you know, how people think, thinking about. That's the difference between the experience and the experiencer. So you can think about whatever you're talking about, but how you think is forever growing. It will forever grow forever for, for on and on and on. Mm -hmm. So if you're not challenging how you think, this is why I talk about the experience -er a lot, the human story a lot, is that how you think is a completely different story. That, that goes into the consciousness as a whole. And when you challenge your belief systems, you're actually 
flexing the muscles of how you think and getting into higher understanding, understanding, overstanding, and interpretation of your reality that's not limited to the linear structures of belief systems. Mm -hmm. So that's one, that's one side. The other side is fear. Don't be afraid to lose subscribers. Don't be afraid to lose whatever, or be challenged about whatever you're talking about. If you feel something, say something. Say something about it because it needs to, it, it, it's coming from somewhere. And we'll, we'll get into this in a second when we're, when we're talking about the blood and everything. But there's, an, there's, a, there's messages that come, like messages that come from your dreams. There's messages that come from your intuitions. Intuition, there's messages that come from your emotional body, the natural emotional body, not the reactionary emotional body that is just largely in the artificial ego. I'm talking about when you feel something, your compassionate, empathic information that comes through naturally. So, for example, when I talk about uh, the origins of the supremacy program, I know some of these big channels see what I'm talking about. I know some of them know what I'm talking about and how I'm talking about. And I know a lot of them can make some videos that expand upon what I'm talking about and expand the storyline. But a lot of them, for whatever reason, a lot of the times is because of fear. It's a fear of whatever it is. A lot of the times just won't because, like I said, they get comfortable in their little their little channel, their little the linear program, whatever it is. Some people focus on this some people focus on that. Like I said, I'm not knocking anybody for doing what they're doing. What I'm saying from my perspective is that. In order for this story to be. Understood from the inside out, we have to start telling the human story. We can't only focus on the, the science of the dome, the science of globe, the science of flat earth and all this other stuff. We have to start expanding the story into the experience earth. If you only, and, and once you start to, from my own um, experience, once you start to challenge yourself to look into the human storyline, it makes it easier to understand the earth storyline. It lightens everything up. Like if people were, if like if they were to flip on the mainstream flat earth switch right now, people would just be all over the place because they will be visualizing the flat earth and everything from the, their level of consciousness. Like I said in the previous video, it don't matter if you're on a globe or you're on a flat plane. A slave is a slave. If you're if you're still enslaved internally, if you're if your consciousness is still enslaved. Then it don't matter if you're on a triangle, if you're on a, a globe, a flat plane, if you're in a hole, on a concave, on a hollow earth, you it know don't what? matter. That's actually a point I made in my recent video with ODD because, um, you know, we brought up the point, should religion, should we attack the religious deception? Because before I knew about flat earth, I knew that religions were a plague upon the minds of humanity. Very divisive, the number one cause of war. So now that I know the earth flat, I still attack the biblical deception, but there are many religious flat earthers, like you said, who have done enough research to realize that the earth is not a globe, but they haven't done enough to realize and to question the very book that lay at the core of their spiritual belief, which is the Bible. And it's crazy because the Bible say question all things, but no Christian never questions the Bible. And I think the brave ones are the ones who do that and they become the Christ that they worship. So that's the mystery of the, the Bible. And I do believe that religions hinder Mother Nature and hinder the children of Mother Nature just as much as the globe, if not worse. Like I said, uh, you know, over in the Middle East, they got wars that they've been fighting for years, jihads and crusades that even the Christians went on. And they these things went for thousands of years. They still going on today. And um, like I said, that that's not the same for the globe. You know, so even though they both go hand in hand, what do you think about the whole thing where you talk about it's really not important to discuss 
infinite plane versus spherical dome, we need to take it back to the human factor. Well, I just want to say that there is a couple of videos that's doing that. Eric DeBay got a couple of videos where he go into the evolution thing. So, so as myself, I talked about the Reese's monkey theory. I don't know if you saw that video I did about the Reese's monkey and the RH blood type factor. But uh, I don't think so. Because flat earth takes away evolution. And when you go back to the fact that flat earth takes away evolution, the more research you do, you realize that if that's so, then there's going to be some holes in the whole out of Africa theory. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the human factor and the flat earth new revelations, I think that the dome and the infinite plane is going to come up because... I think the, the a lot of the religious people want it to be a dome because then they can say, you know, the most high exists and he created the dome. But I think a lot of us who want to expand our mind and we don't want any boundaries, we can accept the idea of a dome, but not as a limitation, more so as a structure that you still can move beyond, you know, because I do embrace the dome and the infinite plane. I'm one of those flat earthers that take them both i'm both of them you know dome and infinite plane i think the uh most important thing about embracing the infinite plane is that it accounts for these other lands that's been spoke of so that's what we want to keep that in, in mind and that'll go into the blood types that land beyond antarctica and the different human factors because if there's different land maybe some of us come from those lands so now i'm gonna turn the mic over to you and let you uh, build on that for a minute. So yeah, I'm the same. I'm same way in reference to the uh, the dome and the infinite plane, uh, because it has to come naturally. That's how I approach everything. These those are the two most vibrant perspectives of my reality right now. So I just put them on the shelf and I leave them there. I don't turn them into a belief system that I'm going to have to defend mm -hmm. against anything else. It exists until internally it gets activated into something that is just matching with everything else. It just makes more sense than not sense. Right now, it's just information that's just existing. So I leave it there at the same time the story that is a constant that is next to both the flat, the, the infinite plane and the dome um, reality is the infinite space of the, the soul essence. So you have the human experience and people who so not everybody is on uh, is coming from there. I personally do come from the space of we are a soul having a physical experience. So that can be, that to me is the same kind of conversation as some people who are seeing the, the perspective of the dome as another trap. You can see the body as a trap. You can see the soul as the infinite plane. So this goes into like the as above, so below. And that's why I said, like, if we start understanding the human story and then go into understanding what's within the earth plane that we are aware of, it will help us understand what's beyond the earth plane, beyond the ice plane, whatever the ice circle or whatever it is, beyond all this stuff. If we start understanding what's internally uh, existing in our reality, then it'll make it more easier, easier to interpret what's going on on the outside. So it's to like whether or not it's a dome or an infinite plane, uh, I'm still rooted in the perspective that what is more, what is more part of my reality is the fact that the soul is infinite. So this place is infinite in some kind of way. And if the dome does exist or something like a barrier between this realm and the next realm or this space and the next space, whatever it is, can be related to something like the body like you you can't really go into another body and then so this is just how i'm like seeing how all these things fit together and then how you can expand it into observing excuse me the non-physical beings or entities and the non-physical realities and how 
you have like possessions and all that other kind of stuff. Like people have to be emptied out in order to be, or completely separated in some kind of way in order to be uh, filled by some kind of parasite or some kind of entity. And then this is this is how I'm seeing what's happening with the heliocentric model. The heliocentric deception is actually like, from how I see it, is a parasite. It's a parasite in reference to the expansion of consciousness and the human experience. It latches on to the non-physical and the physical reality and soaks the energy out of the, the time of our body, the time of our mind, and the time of our soul, and the earth time as a whole. So we lose track of the experience we lose track of the experience er and we lose track between the relationships and the bridges between all between all of those and we don't know what the hell is going on and since we don't know anything that's going on we latch on to anything that seems different or you know more you know obvious in some kind of way and then hold on to that and that's just another trap this is why i focus so much on you know we need to start understanding what's going on with humanity and and the earth itself so I feel if we start understanding the soul relationship to the human experience, the physical to the non-physical reality, it will help us understand whether or not this is the, you know, where the dome is, if there's a dome and the infinite space of the earth itself and the relation to the physical reality and the infinite space, the finite and the infinite, the infinite. There's a relationship that the body and the human, the body and the soul has with that that I see is the earth has that same real relationship. There's a finite and an infinite or an infinite space. And once we start to interpret those realities, which largely a lot of the ancestors have already started to interpret, and we, we, don't, we don't even look into that. We don't uh, cross-reference any of the information that's coming out right now because demonize the indigenous and the aboriginal people as savages. And this, this goes into people who are believing in the evolution theory and a lot of people who are believing in the rep, uh, the religious perspectives. If you believe in all this, that you know, humanity of today is the highest evolutionary step of humanity, then you have to, that inherently makes you think that the people before you, your ancestors, your indigenous and aboriginal people were primitive, savage pieces of shit who have no understanding of this reality. So whether you're a globe head who believes in evolution, whether you're a strictly religious person who only believes in the Abrahamic faith or the Bible perspectives or whatever, you lock yourself into one belief system, whatever it is, realize what you are doing to people, your ancestors, your family members that existed before us. And like I said in previous videos, if you don't know who you were, if you don't know your, your history, you sure as hell don't know who you are, and you ain't gonna know where it is that you're going or what it is that's, that's going anywhere. This is the experience earth. And in relation to like people who are strictly from the religious perspective and specifically the Bible perspective, uh, there's nothing wrong. I'll knock anybody from coming in from that perspective or getting information from that perspective. What I'm saying is that right at the root of the question, which is more divine? Your soul essence, you as the experiencer, you as the beating life force energy of this experience, or a or some pages written some words written on some pages in a book, which is more divine and which is more of your responsibility of interpreting something outside of you or you yourself mm -hmm. start that. That's why I'm asking. Start there, like start from that space that can take an entire lifetime to get out of. So like we have all of these barriers in between. And like I said, I'm not knocking anybody for believing and doing whatever it is that they're doing. You can, you can do, two things at the same time and you make your reality more vibrant by understanding because those things that don't resonate with who and what you what you are like like what you're really feeling and uh, understanding as part of your reality they will naturally fall off the more you become the more you become lighter in your interpretation of your reality the more the denser programs 
the density that is within your experience that you've gathered on, like heliocentrism, is a dense ass reality. It's like an illusion with an illusion. So once you get into the lighter versions of interpreting your reality, the dense the dense perspectives will fall off on your own. Don't force them. They will fall off on their own. Mm -hmm. It's good that you speak about religion because as a Christian, you're being taught to not question authority. The Bible teaches Christians not to question government authority. So the very fact that a flat earther is a Christian and they're going against NASA and questioning the government, they're disobeying the Bible. I just wanted to say that to be a flat earther, you're going to have to question some of these things that the Bible say don't question. So that's that's where I draw the line and I say that um, the whole thing is really not about being a flat earther as it is about being one who don't have no limits to their questioning. There was a movie they made called Limitless. And I think that it, in our lifetime, the one who is limitless is the one who will question even their own things that they're hold dear to you know i i believe in the dome and i question it every day but i'm just saying i'm willing to get rid of any one of my beliefs tomorrow if i'm presented with something that's factual and i think that's the problem with religious people because when you're given this god since you were a child it's a bigger attachment than the globe that you have to learn later in school it's so easy to just take this hero God as an infant for you can even question. So it's deeply embedded there. And I think that it needs to be attacked just as strong as the globe. So I'm with you on that, man. It's like another comfort. It's, it's a, a creature comfort to where we don't let go. We can't let go because we've been comfortable with that for so long. We've been, we need that savior. We need that warmth, that, that, of, well, at least the Bible exists. At least religion exists. Mm -hmm. At least this exists. If the, as long as this exists, then everything is okay. And that's no different than the born in sin mentality, the um, the, the the beastly human experience mentality. That's there's no difference. It just it's it's just another yeah. buffer between you challenging your reality as a whole. And it creates limitations once you over, it can create limitations. And in my perspective, it's an inherent limitation because like I said, it puts a it puts something in between you and your soul inherently, which is more divine at its origin. Like you weren't born, you didn't come out of your mom's vagina with the Bible in your hand. So you equipped everything that you need in this experience in your blood, in your in your body, in your mind, in your soul, and in the experience as a whole with everybody that's around you. And if we can't let go of the savior of the university system, Bill Nye is seen as a savior right now. He's comfortable. People are happily dumb shit knowing that Bill Nye is out there taking on quantum physics. People are happy as shit knowing that Neil deGrasse Tyson is out there challenging the quantum reality and asking questions about gravity, which he has no, they, these are all illusions. They're just like baby Jesuses. Yeah. You have all these little baby Jesuses walking around, making it like, you know, they, they are the saviors of your reality. And it's really just another savior of another illusion. And that's all the, the way up that's, until all the way up the the ladder until you realize that the inherent purpose of the entire experience that down to the physical reality is to separate you. It's a challenge for you to realize that there is no separation. You are not limited to the body. You are the soul having a physical experience. So people people don't have trouble even seeing that even in religion. Because of the fear of death, is everything is everything is largely based upon in the control grids is largely based upon the fear, mm -hmm. fear and low vibrations. People have a fear of letting go of the Jesus program. You just made me think about something. 
because it's not just the religious people pushing the fear. You, the whole thing about being a Christian is rooted in fear. You can't have a religion without fear. And it's crazy because Flat Earth teaches us to question everything. Flat Earth teaches us to not be satisfied with a belief, but to take that belief and pound away at it every day until we can either prove it or disprove it. Whereas you have the Christian flat earthers or the religious flat earthers, whatever religion they have, they using a fact, which is flat earth, but they're founding it upon a belief, something that we said we totally against this flat earthers. Remember, we don't deal with beliefs. We all about taking beliefs and doing the scientific method, even with the religious people, as they say, we're truthers, but they don't want to investigate the Bible the same way they investigate the globe. And on the other hand, you have the non-religious people who still have the religious template where, where they're telling you like, okay, instead of a Jesus, we got to escape the hyperborea or make a journey to the North Pole. Or instead of the Bible telling you you're being born into sin, they're just telling you your bodies are cursing, your other body is somewhere else. The Bible say the same thing. The Bible say that the earth is a curse and that when Jesus come back, he's going to toss it into the lake of fire. And you have a group of flat earthers that's saying that the earth is also just a simulation or some place where you're not your body. But to me, what I'm starting to do is see physicality and spirituality as one and the same, yin and yang. You know, I think that what we call spirituality is actually composed of, quote unquote, physical particles and elements, lighter mm -hmm. forms of it. I don't think you can escape matter or mother. And that's what I teach. So that's not really a religion. That's a fact because we can't escape matter. Even if we say there's a spiritual realm, when we describe this spiritual realm, the way we describe it, it's impossible for it to exist without matter. If we say these spirits are moving and touching each other and they're seeing things, these things have to be composed of some type of spiritual matter that's, let's say, a less dense um, form of the matter we're in. But basically what I'm saying here is that solid liquid gas, water is water no matter if it's a heavy glacier or light gas which ascends and I think that can be said for a human too that we exist in all of those states simultaneously so right now we're tuned into the physicality but upon death we will go to the liquid form when we decompose and liquefy in the ground if you look up decomposition you'll see we do go through a liquid phase and then ultimately when you vanish that's the gas phase so what I'm seeing here is well, we got yin, serpent, yang. You say this or that. We can never forget about the or in the middle. Or when we say yin and yang, the serpent that's in the middle. So I'm thinking physicality, non-physicality is all what makes up existence itself. The, the, the very moment we're having now, you know, just like you can't have the serpent without the yin and yang constantly being uh, united so that's the way I'm kind of seeing it solid liquid gas and through our afterlife journey when we take that gas form that's the form where we're able to escape um, the laws of uh, density and actually ascend like helium and then maybe the process will re-begin so you know it enters belief at that point but the process is definitely a fact, solid liquid gas. I see it the same way. Uh, we have, uh, I blend it with like the waking state, also blend it with the waking state and the dream space or the conscious and the subconscious is the linear and the nonlinear, the electric and the magnetic. So you have the, 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 the feminine, the masculine, masculine, the light and the dark. Um, and you have like in reference to the electric and the magnetic, the magnetic attracts, so the physical reality, the, the feminine energy of the material realm attracts. But electrical energy, when you put it in water, you can't see it. But if you step your foot in that water that is electrified, your ass will get electrocuted. So you can't see it. So that's how you can see like the relationship between um, 
like the, the visible and the non the non visible. So we have all of these scientific observations that exist. True science, not the scientism bullshit that's put through the um, through the university system. But you mm -hmm. have all of these things that exist that, in my opinion and my observation, are created from the spiritual understanding. Because you're really talking about alchemy. You're talking about the relationship between true science and the spirit. So you, your alchemy is the, the balance between the spirit, the spiritual understanding of reality and the material understanding or the scientific understanding of true magic of the experience overall. Mm -hmm. So the alchemy of the, this experience needs an experience -er in order to expand those elements, in order to expand those theories those vibrations into a higher vibration and that's how I'm seeing what this entire human experience is and why it's so beneficial for parasites to keep the core the majority of the people who are experiencing this reality at a, at a particular level a uh, particular level of consciousness at a particular vibration so it, because it won't expand and you can see this in reference to the solid the liquid and the gas, you can see that as the physical reality, the mental reality, and the non-physical or the soul reality, the solid, the, the solid, the liquid, and the gas. So the, the, the mind is very liquid. It's, it's like we're saying water. So your blood is water. Your, everything that you're made is, uh, is water. So your water having an, a gaseous experience, largely a gaseous mixed in with the physical reality. You breathe air with your physical body and your blood is the water. So you have all of these elements and these relationships with all these elements that are based upon a particular vibration and how you engage in that experience is going to be dependent on the whether or not you activate your consciousness or get comfortable in a particular comfort zone of thinking no different than thinking that you're the at the top of the world that you're you're the best thing since sliced bread if you're the general manager of your local office depot like people think that they're like a savior of the world because of their artificial reality mm -hmm. it's it's all based upon vibration so in reference to like the and, and scientific studies have been done to prove this stuff and you can relate this to like the D dr masaro emoto experience where he was particles uh, in reference to the programmable, pretty much programmable wa programming water, the, the molecular structure of water. When you put up the uh, a positive, a positively charged word or like love, compassion, empathy, whatever that is, it creates a, a particular ge sacred geometry or regular geometry that has some kind of balance has some kind of uh math some kind of you, you know what interpretive i actually did a video on that it's called music transform your molecular structure i know exactly what you're talking about and the structure of the form is always like a snowflake type hexagonal type structure and then that's, mm -hmm. I believe that's what you mean. The hexagon shape is very divine. And I find that strange that today when we say hex, we link it to curse. But I don't want to go into that. We can talk about that another time about the hexagon because they got this whole Saturn deception and the hex cube thing. I want to talk to you about that. But we reaching our hour mark. I want you to finish what you were saying about the structured water. Okay, and, and real quickly to add on to the hexagon perspective and all that. Now, I don't see like, I don't see the way the system uses that alchemy as the origin of the alchemy. The origin of the alchemy doesn't exist on how the manipulators of the program use it. That it doesn't exist. It doesn't originate in that space. When you break it down to an elemental observation of reality, you'll see that the hexagon or the cube re is the elemental relation or representation of the earth itself. So you have the fire, the earth, the water, the air, and the ether. You have the elements of the reality, and the hexagon or the cube actually represents earth. And when I see people using or the um, 
so-called powers that be or whoever using those symbols is really just a representation of a control or a a uh, an idea of control over the earth itself and that largely what happens if you control the consciousness of people you control the damn earth yeah so yeah that's that's what's that's how I see that utilization in it. If you come at it from that perspective, from the elemental perspective of what that means, and then you can you can um, cross reference it with what Saturn means in reference to the other um, bodies that are or the the light bodies that are circling around us or whatever that is, the energy of those bodies, then you can see that it's just activated. It's the crown of the earth. And whoever holds the crown of the earth or the crown of the consciousness is going to control the vibratory uh, level or expansion or time grid or, of consciousness as a whole. And that goes back into exactly what I was talking about in reference to Dr. Masaru Emoto. If you play like some shitty ass music or put some garbage words next to some water, it'll affect the molecular structure of that water. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily the word that's affecting the water only it's you as the experience er that is having a relationship with that water largely on a non-physical um experience we are more non-physical and also the vibration of the words too that we speak because the sound is vibration i, I believe that play a part as well too because um if, if you go up to the water and say i love you It'll make a nice, pretty-looking snowflake or something, as opposed to the. It's alive. Uh huh. We we don't see we don't see life. We see life through the eyes of our controllers. We see life and we see energy. We see spirit. We see matter through the eyes of the university system. We don't see life through the eyes of our ancestors. We don't see life through the eyes of the human experience. We don't mm -hmm. see life through our soul essence or the spirit at all. We see life through a middleman. A lot of people who see life, some people who are caught up in the religious programs, they see life and their soul through the buffer, the, the middleman of a preacher or a pastor or the Bible, whatever it is. And these are all stepping stones uh, for people who need them. Some people don't need that to make that relationship with themselves largely with the essence of nature, the essence of spirit, the essence mm -hmm. of whatever it is that you want to call it, it's be it's it's uh it's not limited to what the man make for you. So in reference to and I'll end it on this just just um as a basic observation of the relationship between the spiritual plane and the material plane. The, the Dr. Masaru Emoto experience or, or experiment is a perfect example of that because you can see that when you, you verbalize something, you're creating an energy. That is your spiritual non-physical essence that's program, programming something in the ethers that is being affected by a cup of water or something like that. So it's not your physical body that's actually doing that. It's not the material body that's doing that, but your material body has to create the vibrations that's in the relationship of your soul to be received by that glass of water. So that's the relationship between the non-physical and the physical or the spiritual and the material that the science community or scientism community will never go into because once you start going into that you start going into alchemy you start going into the ancestors you start going into the information that removes the power the illusory power from the so-called powers that be and empowers the actual people who are receiving that information like that information just becoming aware of that information is a vibe that changes the molecular structure of your blood, of your water, who you are, through your consciousness. So it's like a double, it's a double expansion because you are you are getting the, the information that expands, not only expands your consciousness, but expands the vibration of your actual material based body that is being affected by everything that you experience in your dream space and in your waking space. Mm -hmm. There's been plenty of people come about
to explain the process of programming water. I was told that you there's a process you can take your water and you can take a bottle of water and maybe put headphones on it or sing a song to it and it actually changed those molecules when you drink it. And uh, certain people who went to botany, when they plant near certain plants, they have stories about actually singing to the seeds. And actually that sound information goes into it the same way a mother sings to the baby in the fetus. So water is reactionary. It manipulates itself. We're 75% water. And that explains how we can be easily programmed with vibration and sound by manipulating that guys if you enjoyed this we haven't even uh scratched the surface we're about to get into a whole slide presentation here in a minute so join us for part two